Jason X. Sometime in the future, Jason is being experimented on, and he's chained up. And as the film starts, Dr. Cronenberg, David Cronenberg, comes around to take him someplace else because they don't want to freeze him, they want to keep experimenting on him at the Crystal Lake Research Center. You have to wonder what else they research. I wouldn't think that there'd be anything worth researching there other than Jason, but what the hey. Because Rowan, I think she's called, at one point says she was assigned to researching Jason Voorhees. I wouldn't think there'd be anything else to research, but whatever. So Cronenberg is certain that nothing will go wrong, and that's you know what you should never say in a horror film. So he gets killed. So does all his guards. Somehow Jason gets a machete. I don't know where. Jason poses a bit, standing idle for no good reason. I'll get back to that. Then. Rowan, who was in favor of having him frozen, manages <coughs> excuse me, to freeze him. Only he stabs out with the machete that materialized and wounds her, and she falls over, and hundreds of years later they're found, and she's in a different position than when she was frozen. So is he. And somehow the power remained on in this cryostasis unit, in spite of the fact that we're told that everything on Earth is dead and presumably there wouldn't be anything left running the power. We're ten minutes in, people. I've lost count of how many obvious mistakes this movie has already made. Anyway, they bring him aboard because, even in the future, stupidity reigns supreme. And now Jason is in space and in the future. And the rest of the film plays a bit like a poorly done alien knockoff with a little bit of aliens thrown in for good measure and with Jason in place of H.R. Geiger's infamous design. When you try to recreate another movie's formula, you should really understand why that movie worked. These people don't. I'll admit that this is actually fairly nicely shot and edited, but nothing has any impact. The movie is 84 minutes long, and yes, this was my third viewing, but I just could not get into it again. Even though I had forgotten most of what happened because it left no impression on me. The acting is again poor, the characters are dull and or obnoxious. There are way too many of them to ensure that the body count can be nice and high. The death scenes are pretty creative, and there are a lot of memorable deaths. This is also one of the few cases where a Friday the 13th movie on the DVD has a jump to a death, or at least on the ones that I've gotten, anyway. A trait that I found more common in the Nightmare on Elm Street series DVDs. There are some nice designs and the effects are certainly good and the effects people knew it because the entire opening credits sequence is essentially the FX crew masturbating. Uber Jason, who you've probably already seen in the trailers and such, is a pretty cool creation but do realize he does not appear for all that much in the film. Among the characters, we have a data knockoff and Tony Todd's long-lost twin brother, 
who can act anywhere near as well as the real Tony Todd can. We also have a knockoff of that sleazy guy from Aliens. Yeah, yeah the, the movie is more, or partially also, science fiction action, and not purely slasher. They do make decent use of the future apparatus to create excuse me, new unique death scenes that we have not seen before. And you know, some of the technology seen in this is cool enough, but we don't care about anyone in the film, and the plot just doesn't particularly... I mean, it can be tense at times, and though there isn't any real stalking, there is a suspenseful, por suspenseful portion or two of Jason killing a lot of people. Jason does a lot of posing in this. He tends to pose just long enough for every character in the scene to fire off at least one pitifully poor one-liner. The dialogue is awful. I think that just about covers it. Kane Hodder still manages to be pretty terrifying, even when he's just standing there, sometimes at least. But on the whole, other than the death scenes, there's not really anything here that's worth the time. With how good these people clearly are at filming and editing, I would hope that they get a better script, maybe a better concept. I mean, this was pretty much a cold, you know, dead turkey right from the beginning, if that's a saying, whatever. Maybe I've just coined a new phrase. And maybe they also do need to improve their skills, because, man, this did not, you know, grip your attention much at all. I doubt long-time fans will particularly care for it. There's too much sci-fi and action going on, and it's completely out of place. This was actually the first Friday the 13th movie that I watched, and as such, I enjoyed it okay, but now having watched the original ones, you know, I'd have to say 3, 6, and yes, 9, I really enjoyed. The rest were nah, not that good, but the only thing this has that they don't is, you know, newer effects and a different setting which really doesn't fit so, you know, it's as unengaging and as much just about killing a lot of people and some nudity and sexuality, so I'd rather rewatch the some of the old ones. Anyway, that was my spoiler review of Jason X. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Edition, this DVD comes with two featurettes coming to about 47 minutes total. They're okay. And there is a two-minute theatrical trailer and a commentary track by writer, producer, and director, I think. It's somewhat interesting. And that was my spoiler review of the Jason X DVD. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.